Pershing. It's the name of a famous missile and an equally famous brand of Italian high-performance yachts. 2019 was a milestone year for Pershing because it launched a brand new flagship, the first 43-meter Pershing 140 called Chorus Line. We've come here to Ancona on Italy's Adriatic coast to see where the yachts are built. And behind me here is the second 140 in construction. We're at the Ferretti Group's super yacht yard where they build their largest yachts in steel, aluminium and fiberglass under the brand CRN, Riva, Custom Line and, of course, Pershing. Pershing 140, l'attesissima flagship di Pershing, il primo Pershing mai costruito in alluminio, eh, vol volutamente alla Super Yacht Division di Ancona, perché alla Super Yacht Yard di Ancona ci sono tutte le competenze, gli skills e il supporto a livello produttivo e di engineering con l'audio qualità che ci permettevano di centrare subito e sicuramente l'obiettivo. Questo va bene al di là dell'aspetto logistico, quindi la necessità di varare un 43 metri e 30 largo 855 direttamente sul mare. Attesissimo perché è stato fortemente chiesto so prima e soprattutto dall'utenza Pershing, quindi da chi possedeva da un 90 piedi a salire e desiderava comunque eh, crescere con noi. The Pershing 140 is the result of a collaboration between the Ferretti Group's Product Strategy Committee, headed up by none other than Piero Ferrari, son of Enzo Ferrari, the group's engineering department, and the yacht designer Fulvio Di Simoni, who has designed all the Pershings from the very beginning. It's not only the biggest yacht in the brand's history, a full seven meters longer than the previous flagship, the 115. Because of its size, it's also the first to be built of aluminium instead of fiberglass. Siamo davanti allo scafo numero 2 del Pershing 140, sister ship del 140 numero 1 Chorus Line, che abbiamo operato recentemente. Anche per questa unità, come per la numero 1, abbiamo deciso di costruire in alluminio, ci dà il vantaggio di poter costruire barche senza essere legate a dimensioni, volumi e layout che possiamo in qualche modo gestire insieme al cliente. Anche questa unità, come la numero 1, porta quattro motori principali MTU 16V2000 accoppiati a quattro idrogetti, due laterali eh, steering e due centrali booster per raggiungere la top velocità. La scelta di poter fare l'allestimento con gli idrogetti è stata ehm, guidata dal fatto di poter garantire al cliente l'utilizzo della barca in bassi fondali rispetto a quella che potrebbe essere l'utilizzo con gli stern drive e anche mantenendo un comfort più elevato in quanto gli idrogetti normalmente sono molto più silenziosi e producono meno vibrazioni. di tutto un Pershing per me è riconoscibile. Riconoscibile, ringraziamo ancora l'architetto De Simoni che lo rende tale. È stato uno dei challenge più grandi di questo progetto, non perdere la firma, la feature, la distintività estetica ed esterna di Pershing su una taglia così grande, dove è assolutamente facile perderla. And here we are on the finished yacht over a year and a half after we saw her in build in Ancona. Her name is Touch Me and that's exactly what we're going to do because we've been invited to take her for a spin. The first thing to notice about the configuration of four MTUs and four water jets, two steerable and two boosters, is that at a cruising speed of 25, 27 knots, there's no discernible noise or vibration. The ride is very smooth and comfortable, even on a day like today, which is pretty windy outside. At an economical 10 knots, she puts in a more than respectable range of 1,400 nautical miles. And at anchor, three sea keeper 35 gyro stabilizers 
make sure that the only rock and roll is what comes out of the entertainment system. This is the biggest and most powerful yacht I've ever driven. And I, and I must say that I tend to be more of a displacement yacht kind of guy. But Pershing is all about power and performance. And once you put your hand on this throttle and unleash 10,000 plus horsepower, she just keeps on accelerating up to 38 knots, her official top speed. Although I suspect in ideal conditions, light ships, she could do a little bit better. The sensation is absolutely exhilarating and definitely something I could get used to. In terms of exterior styling, the Simoni has retained the sleek, racy, aggressive lines that we've come to expect from Pershing, but with a contemporary edge that makes the 115 look almost sedate. One feature I really like is the automotive style radiator in the bow, which together with the fair leads gives the yacht almost a face, a bit like a sports car. And another defining feature, of course, are these flying buttresses that continue the lines of the superstructure of the race pilot house down to here on main deck. Pershing 140 is the brand's first model to offer this raised cockpit and stern, which is connected directly to the fly deck. There is another cockpit area, which on Touch Me is used for en plein air dining. But because it's protected by this raised section, offers complete privacy, even when moored stern two in the marina. The other advantage of this mezzanine floor, if you want to call it that, is that it provides much more headroom in the tender garage come beach club below us and when the folding bulwarks are deployed offers something like 40 square meters of deck space. Apart from the sun pad here on the raised cockpit there's another sun pad on the foredeck along with a hot tub and the mooring gear is housed underneath the hydraulic hatch. Of course there's more sunbathing to be had on the fly deck along with full dining facilities, a bar unit and naturally the exterior helm station which has direct access from the raised pilot house. From the aft cockpit we enter the main salon through these glass sliding doors and ahead of me here there's a more formal dining area for those chilly evenings at the end of the season. The interior design, also by Dissimoni in conjunction with the Ferretti Group's in-house architects, is sober and sophisticated and perfectly complements the contemporary exterior styling. The freestanding furniture is by top designer brands such as Poltrona Frau, Rochebobois, Menotti and Artemide for the lighting. The aluminium construction not only provides more structural integrity on a yacht of this size, it also provides more flexibility in terms of layout when compared with fiberglass moulds. In fact, on the first 140 chorus line, this area, we're in the Ford Master Suite on main deck, was a media room and didn't have a bed at all. Instead, on Touch Me, it's a full beam apartment with a private lounge around the corner here, this airy cabin. On a lower level, we have a walk-in wardrobe, followed by the bathroom with a central jacuzzi tub. This is a design detail that I really like. These leather straps and the metal belt buckle, which is a bit like the old style Louis Vuitton travel cases. The guest accommodation on the lower deck comprises three cabins and this full beam VIP suite forward.
at 42 meters overall with a maximum beam of 8.55 meters. It's difficult to call the Pershing 140 an open in the traditional sense. Perhaps Maxi Coupe is a more fitting description. But one thing is for sure, she lacks none of the excitement and thrill of her smaller but very sporty sisters. And who knows, perhaps I'll ask Father Christmas if he'll give me one for Christmas.